How's it going, nerds? Welcome to the Grounded Complete Guide. Now, I received a lot of great feedback from my beginner's guide, so I figured why not go ahead and go through the entire game. I am going to go over the basics and what to expect throughout the game, but I'm not going to be spoiling anything regarding to the story, so don't worry about that. With rumors of a new update coming out, we really don't know what else to expect. So I figured why not go ahead and cover the game in 2023 before they release a brand new update. I had a lot to think about when trying to put together this video. So I figured the easiest way is to break it up between beginning game, mid game, and end game. Let's start off with the main menu. Alright guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. This is going to be your main menu. You have the option of doing single player or multiplayer. Now, one of the things that I really love about multiplayer is not only do you get to host online games, you don't have the sole access to the game itself. When you start a new world, you can share it with your friends and they can actually get on the world without having to have you on the server as well. So that's that's one of the things I absolutely love about it. So we're going to go ahead and jump into a new game. Now, when you start a new game, it's going to default you to medium survival mode. Now, if this is your first time playing, you're going to come across a lot of challenges. You're not going to have to worry so much about food and water first time because beginning is pretty challenging. Uh, it does say that friendly fires off, so when you play with friends, you don't have to worry about killing each other, which is, it's really easy to kill each other in this game. Now we're gonna get into woe mode. This is the most punishing way to live the tiny life. I am not joking. Everything is harder, and for good reason. So playing woe mode, especially compared to the other difficulty levels, I feel like it's quite refreshing. So if this is not your first time playing the game and you haven't tried WoW mode, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's frustrating, but it's a lot of fun. Then you have creative. Now creative is just, it's exactly what it says. Don't worry about, you know, bugs and all that stuff. You can choose no bugs, you can choose with bugs. Uh, it doesn't really matter. They're not going to aggro onto you unless you switch off the stats. But this gives you pretty much free room to build whatever you want. This game does incorporate building and it's one of my favorite games to build in my in my opinion. Then you have custom mode. Custom mode is very special in of itself. So basically, you're going to start off with, you know, your character selection. I chose custom mode mostly for this video, but you have the option to change your difficulty level, which is really important. So let's go ahead and start game. Now I have the dialogue turned off. There is an option to do so in the main menu, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. So right here, you're going to be, I'll show you the map. You're gonna be starting off right here and it is one of those things. One important tip that I probably could say is if you don't like first person mode, you can switch to third person mode. So let's get started. So when you come out here, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is grab everything. There is a reason for most survival games and it is just because it gives you the option to craft more stuff. You gain recipes and everything. The main things you want to grab is plant fiber, sprigs, and peblets. And over here, if you look towards the baseball, you discovered baseball. Now, keep in mind of locations. When it says you discovered something, those are really important for you to just go ahead and explore it throughout the entire backyard. So we're gonna pick up some sap. Also, if you look to the bottom left corner, you're gonna see your food and your water. I recommend keeping an eye on them, especially if you're playing in much more difficult settings. So let's go over to our settings real quick. Now, it's going if you play custom mode, it's going to go ahead and default to medium. That's perfectly fine, but here's one thing that I absolutely love about this game. You can switch your difficulty mode at any time of the game. So it's perfectly fine if you go ahead and switch to mild. Like I said, this game is challenging and it can be a bit confusing. So I recommend looking at the top left corner. Oh, we discovered a field station. So look at the top left corner. It's going to pop up these little prompts. It's basically just going to help you 
navigate throughout the world and navigate through the game. So for survival, it says find and eat some food. I'm going to open up my hotbar. Now this isn't PC, so I hit uh, left bumper and it'll pull up my hotbar. You have the option to switch between your hot pouches, but what we're going to do is we're going to eat some mushrooms. Now there are different types of foods that, but mushrooms are the easiest and the most accessible food that you can get. Now we're going to talk about the field stations. There are a lot of field stations out there throughout the entire backyard. These are very important. Um, it's going to give you access to an analyzer, an ASL terminal, and a resource surveyor. Now, analyzers are really important because this is how you unlock recipes. So we're going to go ahead and just analyze all this stuff. Science. If you look to the right, it says analyzer charges. This means you can only analyze three things at a time. And then there is, I'll show you. Each time you analyze, the analyzer charger goes down. And when you completely use it up, it will go ahead and say zero. The next charge will be in 0923. So if you look over here, it'll always show the time. All right, now we're gonna get to creatures. I'm gonna hit Y, and then I'm gonna hit right bumper. And that's going to peep a creature. Peeping creatures are extremely important in this game because it shows your weakness. Hold on, let me see if I can find... Aha, water. All right, so water droplets, always look up for water droplets in the beginning of the game. The reason being is because all those dew drops are gonna go ahead and drop down. And that's how you end up getting water. All right, so we got an ant. Oh, come back ant. All right, so you're gonna see your weaknesses, which is stabbing and spicy, the resistances and even weak points, if it so happens to have it. All right, what time is it? 9.35. So let's go back to the analyzer. And we're gonna analyze some sap. Science. What I didn't mention before is you're gonna see this thing called raw science. And each time you analyze something or you find it, which will be spread out across the yard, you get raw science. So let's go ahead and go to our menu. Raw science will be in the top right corner. You'll see I have a total of 320 raw science. The reason it is so important to get raw science is because you'll have you'll need it for the ASL terminal, which I will cover much later in this video as we progress in the story. So I'm just going to go ahead and continuously collect and I'll get back to you guys in just a moment. All right, so now that I have gone ahead and collected some more resources, oh, we got a ladybug. These guys are beasts, so just be very careful. They're neutral, so meaning if we go over to the creature list, these guys, we have neutral and we have harmless. We haven't gotten to the ones that will aggro into you. Peeping creatures are extremely important and you can always go to the data in your main menu and look at the difficulty, which will show as hearts, how many times you've killed it, and the weaknesses, resistances, and weak points. They're, they're pretty beastly, so just be careful. So the first things you wanna be able to go ahead and craft, which I'm gonna go over to craft, and we're gonna scroll over to weapons. Now you have a bunch of options to make these, so the first things that I end up making are my tools. So we have your tools, which is the peblet hammer and the peblet axe. Now these guys are going to be super important to have early in the game. So what we need is crude rope. If you can see here, you have a requirement that said that will be in red, which means you won't have any. And the only way to do so is you can craft crude rope, which just takes plant fiber. So what we're going to do is we're going to craft five crude rope at a time. And then we're going to go back here. We're going to create the peblet hammer and the peblet axe. All right, so now that we have the axe, I'm going to go ahead and start chopping down grass. The reason why I like to start chopping down grass is so I can go ahead and just start analyzing stuff as fast as possible. So don't forget when you chop down grass and weed stems, which I will show you here in a minute. 
you can analyze it. These are going to be your building materials. And yeah, so over here we have some dry grass. That's another thing we can analyze. Hello Weevil. So these guys are super important to have. These will give you meat. You have Weevils and Aphids. Alright, so now we're going to get to building. The first thing that I always like to build is a spit. So I can cook my food. And a workbench. These are going to be your first... I recommend building these first. Alright, so now that we got some food, let's go ahead and come over to the spit. So we got some Weevil meat. A spit will hold up to three food at a time. And yes, you do have to wait for these to cook, which is, in my opinion, pretty cool. It takes, you know, quite a bit of time. One thing to look out for in the beginning of the game, especially if you don't have a base, is don't leave your food unattended. <laughs> you will get robbed. These little ants that you see around here... Oh! There you go! It will make a little bell so that you know when it's ready. And we have food! But yes, keep an eye on your food because the little worker ants will eat your food. So we have our little aphid right here. These guys are pretty fast in the beginning of the game. Chances are you're not... Okay, so I was able to kill this one. But they're pretty fast. If you don't... <laughs> you you can't really sneak up to them. They're, they're, they're pretty fast. When you get an aphid, you want to go ahead and analyze it right away. Because it's going to give you these really awesome slippers called aphid slippers. They have this ability to give you... I think I need two. Let me check. I do need to. And we need my fuzz. That's fine. Alright, so now we're going to craft our first weapon. Okay, so here's some things that you can do. You can craft the Peblet Spear as for right now, which I'm going to go ahead and do. Clover Leaves. Clover Leaves are extremely important to get in the first part of the game. Like, as soon as you get in, the reason being is because this is how you're going to craft your first lean-to. So I'm gonna head back to the field station. In case anyone is wondering, this is actually one of the safer spots to go ahead and build a base, as long as you go to bed by 6 p.m. So I'm gonna go ahead and build my lean-to. Oh, I need to analyze it first. <laughs> and there you are. So you'll unlock the lean-to storage basket, clover table, and you'll even get more plant fiber. But I'll show you how you can get plant fiber uh, later on. So now that we have it, we can go ahead and build the lean-to right here. I need more sprigs. Alright, you can hear- Okay, we discovered the mysterious machine. This is part of the story, so I'm not gonna cover this part. Alright, so you're gonna see up here, these are gnats. They are really easy to kill, but they're absolutely important to get super early in the game. Gnats give out gnat fuzz and meat that you can also cook, so that's also super important to know. The reason why you need gnats early in the game is it's one of the items you need to craft a bow, which I highly recommend getting in the beginning of the game. I don't actually use a bow because I suck at range, but that's just me. Alright, so I craft a pebblet spear. Now, something to keep in mind about these early game weapons and tools is that they are going to... they're not going to last very long. Uh, so, which is why you want to continuously collect resources like plant fiber, sprigs, and, uh, yeah. Oh, over here. These are, uh, little pebbles that you can bust open with a hammer. Okay, so over here. These are really important to, uh, to have. Uh, what I did right there is called perfect block. So perfect blocking an attack will deal no damage whatsoever, and it's I honestly, it is a. Uh, it's how you survive in this game. I wish I knew how to perfect block the first time I did play this game, because I would. It would have saved me so many deaths. Also, keep in mind of your time, guys. You can go to bed at 1800, which is six o'clock, and it's very important, especially in the beginning of the game, that you keep an eye on that time. Now we're gonna go into this hole, which. I recommend making a torch. I need dry grass and sprigs. If you're curious about how to perfect block, or you have a difficult time how to perfect block, I do have some videos where it will, it will cover pretty much every creature in the game. 
I cover attack patterns and everything that you could possibly need in order to block each creature. I, I didn't go over every creature, just like the main ones. So right there I ran out of stamina. One thing to really know, especially why you need to keep an eye on your thirst and hunger, when you are low on water, I need sprigs, I forgot to build my lean to. Your stamina will not regenerate as quick as you possibly need it. All right, so we have our first lean to. Now our lean to is basically gonna be where we set our spawn point. If you do not set your spawn point, you will go back to where you first started. Another thing to keep in mind is the reason why you want to discover these field stations is because when you die, you can also respawn at a field station. If you look down at my health bar, you could see that I took some damage. They changed this, but if you eat food, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just eat food, it will regenerate your health. Now, food itself, like cooked food, does not regenerate quite a bit. However, if you go to field stations, you'll come across these granola bars. These granola bars are pretty important early in the game. They will regenerate uh, the majority of your health. It's really important to have these. Ooh, we got the gnats. We got the gnats. They're down. Don't go anywhere, gnats! Don't go anywhere, gnats! Oh, shoot. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. I ran out of stamina! There we go. So we got the gnats, and you need a total of four gnat fuzz. I think. <laughs> I think. All right, you can see here that I need food and water. I'm gonna go ahead and eat some food. I believe an aphid just die randomly. It's just a little bug that happens in the game. You can get lucky if that happens to you. By the way, on mild, food will not spoil as fast. So that's something that's really awesome. On woe mode, it will spoil really fast. So just keep an eye on it. I will not be covering any sort of building in this video just because I could go on forever about building. I absolutely love it. If you guys are curious about building, I do have a video based on, you know, tips and tricks on how to build. And you can find that. I'll link it. I'll link it down below for you guys. Okay, let's just talk about this for a second. Discovering locations is really important because it will unlock a mutation called Natural Explorer. And the reason why you want to discover as many things as possible is because it will grant you the ability to run faster. Alright guys, so the reason why you want to go ahead and sleep at 6pm and waking up at 6am is because of these guys right here. Right there, these are wolf spiders. These guys roam at night. You want to be very careful. These guys have a lot of health and it can be almost impossible to take them on early in the game. So we have two over here that sleeps under uh, within the oak tree itself, but you don't really have to worry about them. So let's go ahead and keep collecting these acorns. So collecting these acorns, you'll always be able to find it by the oak tree. Uh, and then you can find a bunch of sap over here as well, in case you ever are low on sap. Hello, little ladybug. Look how much health. These guys have six health bars, and they are a tank. So be very careful not to hit them first off the bat, unless you're just curious about how, how fast you can die. Now, if you can hear that noise, it is, and you look down at the bottom left corner, you're going to see a little radar. It took me a while to figure out what that was, but basically what it is, is a little radar to show you where the next field station is. Or a lab. Alright, so I just got some more sap. Okay, so we're going to get over here. This is going to be your first lab that you go to. Something to keep in mind is there are orb weavers. There are yellow spiders that roam around in this area. You'll come across two different types of orb weavers. One is called an regular orb weaver, which is the big one. And then you will come across an orb weaver junior, which is which are the smaller ones. So I'm gonna skip through all of this stuff just because it is part of the story, but you're gonna come across labs such as this. And it's important for you to just kind of explore around 
<clears throat> I am analyzing the acorn so that you get the acorn armor. Now this is going to be your he first heavy armor that you're going to go ahead and get. I definitely recommend getting these first thing. The Weevil Nose will go ahead and unlock the Gas Mask. So I'm not going to tell you each and everything that I'm going to unlock. But basically you should get the gist and hopefully uh, you'll be able to figure it out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and skip through all this part and I'll see you guys when I'm done. Okay, so after you talk to this, this cute little guy, it's going to unlock the ASL terminal right over here. Now these guys are extremely important to have and now I'm going to show you why. So what's going to happen is you're going to click on the ASL. Now this is where you come across the science shop. Having raw science is really important because this is where you're going to go ahead and purchase the things necessary for you in the game. Now we're going to go ahead and unlock the smithing station firsthand. And I'm a builder so I go ahead and do the multi-story bases but you don't have to do that. Uh, fortified bases, that's also for building torch upgrade. Meat shield is uh, a mutation. But basically, meat shield is a really important mutation because it extends your health. So you have more health to begin with. But I don't have enough raw science to purchase it. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip it. Uh, another thing another thing about the ASL terminals is you'll get these burgle quests. Uh, these are basically, you know ways to go ahead and just get more raw science. You can do these early in the game because it gives you raw science. We are going to go ahead. I'm not going to get so much into it just because I feel like that's just part of the exploration. You know, like you guys can figure this part out. Oh, snap. Okay, so here is your first enemy or your first orb weaver. Uh, so these guys are pretty tough. They have five health bars and they have certain attack patterns. Uh, I think it's three. I'm not entirely too sure I would be able to kill these guys. Mostly because the junior also roams around here. But if I die, I will go ahead and show you. Oh, it got stunned. A. Be careful with the webs, you will get stuck in it. And... You're done. Boom! Alright, so... <laughs> that was exciting! It's been a while since I, uh... <laughs> took on an orb weaver and was a little nervous. <laughs> but we got it done. I can just tell you right now perfect blocking again perfect blocking is extremely important early in the game uh again if you guys have any difficulties i do have a couple of videos for how to perfect block over here underneath this can is what's called a milk molar these guys are important for upgrades which we haven't gotten there yet but i'll show you that you know a little bit later oh a little tip in case you guys are looking for weevils, weevils like to hang around mushrooms. It's one of their favorite things. So if you ever need food, you can always find them by mushrooms. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to come over here. We're going to make our aphid slippers. This is going to make us run faster. All right, let's see what we need to make the first acorn armor. I usually like going for the chest plate first just because it gives you more defense. All right, there we go. Okay, so what's great about the acorn chest plate is it is going to be the it's going to be heavy armor. However, if you look right here, it also says major threat. Okay, now we have the full set of armor. Boom, look at that, guys. Boom. Having a full set of armor will give you a buff. So just keep in mind. However, you can switch up, you know, different different armor and pair it together to give you certain effects. After you do the Oak Lab and you talk to Burgle, you have two options to do. You can either spend this time building a, you know, a decent base, like a little starter base, or you can go straight over 
to the way marker. Keep an eye on these way markers, especially regarding to the story, because it'll just show you where you're supposed to go to next. All right, guys. So one of the early heavy hitters for weapons I recommend you getting is called the Spiky Sprig. Now, this guy will give out quite a bit of damage. It's a two-handed weapon, but here's one thing that it has. It's called Bleed. Um, what basically means is when you attack a creature, it will go ahead and do so. It will bleed. It will drain the health a little bit at a time. So if you take a look at... Okay, that was really quick. So I hit the worker ant. You see how fast that's draining? Now keep in mind, the damage will vary depending on your difficulty level. So... You know, being on mild, it will drain pretty quickly, so you don't have to worry about it. But it only took one hit, which is ridiculous. Alright, so now we're gonna head over to the hedge lab. And I'm gonna skip through all this part, just because it's a little annoying to get there. But it's just, it's, you know, just make sure you have a dandelion tough. Alright, welcome to the fling man disc. Now, over here is where you're gonna find the entry point for the brood mother herself. If you guys can't find the hedge lab, which can be difficult to find at first, uh, I can either make a video on it, or you can just search it on YouTube. Uh, there's a couple of videos that will show you how to get here, no problem. Alright, so this is going to be the hedge lab. You're going to go ahead and mash these keys right here. Um, I'm in creative mode as of right now, I switched over. You will come across creatures such as spiderlings, or weaver juniors, and these things called pasties. They are little robots that pack a punch. So definitely be on the lookout for those. As you're roaming the hedge, just be careful for all the orb weavers that do roam around here. They're located much further in the back of the hedge than they are uh, towards the entrance of the hedge by the deck. Make sure you do the hedge lab early in the day just because there are three wolf spiders that do roam around in this area. Okay, this part is a little boring, but it's super important to have early in the game. These are called, these are grinders, and these are spinning wheels. You want to be able to have, uh, you know, a, you know, a couple of them early in the game. Spinning wheels will create silk rope, crude rope, and lint rope. Grinders are important because you can, uh, you can make pretty much every type of slurry, different types of plant fiber. So if I scroll down to plant fiber times eight it requires weed stems. Just a little tip. All right, let's get into tier two, guys. So the more creatures that you end up defeating, the more things you'll be able to unlock. I'm going to recommend the ladybug armor. The ladybug armor is so important, in my opinion. If you don't want to take too much damage, this is going to be the best armor for you. It is a heavy armor and it gives you block strength. Whenever you upgrade, armor and weapons, it will give you a certain buff. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and upgrade these. I always go for the sleek effects. When you get to level 5, you're going to have two options. You're going to have the bulky and you're going to have the sleek options. Now, if you can see the enhanced effects to the right, you'll see that this says plus 35% defense and plus 35% durability. It is going to be a lot more for the sleek effects. However, here's where things get really interesting. If you so choose to do the sleek effect, it gives you a buff. The reason why the ladybug armor is one of the best armor to have is because it gives you increased healing. After you have the spiky sprig, which I recommend to be your main weapon of choice in the beginning of the game, you're gonna wanna go for the red ant club. Now. Two-handed weapons are slower, yes, but they deal a lot more damage, and you want to be able to take these creatures down as fast as possible. In my opinion, you're going to have the tier 2 armor and axe for, for quite a while until you get to tier 3. Unless you've been playing this for a while, you can get up to tier 3 pretty fast in the game. Alright, your very first wolf spider. Again, I do recommend uh, having at least tier 2 armor. It can be frustrating, especially if you don't know how to perfect block. Let's go ahead and do it! Now, if I remember correctly, the uh, wolf spider has 4 attack patterns. And we got stunned. 
Okay, so I'm not taking any damage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let it hit me so I can so I can show you just how uh, much damage the poison will do. So you can see my health draining. Uh, again, depending on difficulty, you are going to experience a lot more damage uh, early in the game. The Haze Lab. Now the Haze Lab is going to be, it's most likely going to be the first boss that you come across. I definitely recommend tier two armor and tier two weapons to go against her. The infected ladybug can be difficult on herself because she, not only does she attack you, she also gives out explosions. But what makes it even more difficult is that she sends in ads as well. You'll come across some infected mites and maybe even infected larva. Each difficulty will range on the ads. I don't believe any ads get spawned in for mild, but you will come across at least one larva during medium and there's a lot in woe mode. The strategy, especially when playing in medium or woe mode, is to keep moving. There's going to be explosions, there's going to be mites throwing their infected goo at you, there's going to be larva that wants to explode. There's going to be a lot. I recommend getting rid of the ads first, mostly because they don't, they don't continuously spawn. They'll spawn in once, and once you defeat them, they're pretty much done and you can focus on the infected ladybug. I'm not going to talk too much about the fight itself just because I think it's exciting to go against her, but these are some of the tips that I found helpful going against her. Once you get the insect hammer, you have the ability to go ahead and collect milk molars. There are two different types of milk molars. There are regular ones and there are mega milk molars. They're going to be spread out and hidden throughout the entire backyard, so just, you know, explore out, try to find them. The reason why milk molars are extremely important is because this is going to give you upgrades for yourself entirely. You have the choice between max health, stamina, hunger and thirst strain, which I don't really care about, unless you're in woe mode, healing, and max active mutations. I will tell you this right now, the mutations is the first thing that I max out. I focus on mutations firsthand just because the more you play the game, the more mutations you end up getting and you want to be able to stack those mutations so it's easier for you to survive. However, if it's your first time, I do recommend going for uh, max health and max stamina right off the bat until you can get the hang of perfect blocking. So the pawn lab. The pawn lab is really simple. You don't have to go against any bosses like the haze lab or the black ant lab. Instead, what you're going to need are very vital items. The first thing that you're going to be able to get is the gill tube. It's just going to allow you to breathe underwater for a little bit longer. The fin flops, which will allow you to swim faster, as you can imagine. I'm not going to show you where the lab is located. I think it's exciting for you to just discover it on your own. However, if you guys are having a difficult time, there are videos on YouTube that you can go ahead and just look up. The Black Ant Lab. Now the Black Ant Lab is going to be like your final official lab. It's where you go against the assistant manager. The assistant manager is going to be the toughest boss that you're going to come across during the game, de depending how you play the game. But if you go along with the story, it'll definitely be the hardest boss. It is weak against busting, so I recommend at least going against her with the red ant club. I maxed out my armor and my weapons, so they were level 5. So I would definitely recommend at least that. The reason why it's so difficult is because the assistant manager will continuously send in ads. You'll have lasers, you'll have electrical shocks. It can get pretty overwhelming pretty fast, but that's pretty much all I'm going to say about it. The reason why the Black Ant Lab is extremely important is because once you defeat the assistant manager, you get the assistant manager key card. This card is important throughout the entire game because it unlocks certain doors where you can get, you know, treasure, the zipper to go up zip lines, and so much more. Once you get the burgle chip that's inside the black ant lab, you will unlock mighty globs and sturdy plating. This will allow you to upgrade past level 5, and the burgle chip that's located in the small lab, little outpost, will also unlock the flavored globs. These are important to have throughout the game because when you peep creatures, you'll find out what their weaknesses are. 
which will be easier for you to survive in the game itself. Now for the absolute fun part, tier three. It is time to enter the upper yard. The upper yard on top of the retaining walls is a whole nother level. So I recommend that you have level five armor and weapons. The first armor that I usually end up going against is the roly poly. These guys are kind of like ladybugs. They are tanks. They are, they will take you down without hesitation. I forget how many attack patterns it has, but if you're curious about it, go ahead and watch the parry videos that is linked down below. There are a lot of heavy hitters in the tier three section. I recommend taking on the upper yard after you've defeated the black ant lab. So once you get the mighty globs and the sturdy platings, um, I went ahead and just upgraded this red ant club to mighty just because it does give more damage. I don't really worry about the flavored globs until I'm a little bit more established. Now, remember when I said that peeping creatures is extremely important? Tier three creatures, this is where it's going to come in handy. All right, so over here we have the ladybird. They are just tier three ladybugs, but they will aggro onto you. And these guys are no joke. I've been two shotted and one shotted from them before. It's, 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 it's intense, it gets intense. They are weak against busting and fresh. All right, so she's aggroing onto me. Now again, really watch your parries, guys. I like to play defense before anything else. Really watch her attack patterns. There we go. And there you go. So you end up, I actually got a ladybird shell. So ladybird shells are uh, super important because they can be crafted into making supreme plating. All right, so once you get your uh, set of tier three armor, you're pretty much set to take on the rest of the yard. Uh, there are gonna be creatures that will, you know, still do quite a bit of damage, but you don't really have to worry about that as long as you have your tier three armor. I had at least one piece of tier three armor before I took on the, uh, you know, the haze lab and the black ant lab, mostly because it's difficult on your own, uh, especially, you know, like I said, each difficulty has its, uh, it has its moments. You know, at this point, you've already got a handle of the game itself. You've defeated, you know, some creatures. Maybe you've even defeated the brood mother. But it's going to unlock a lot of stuff that you can do in the upper yard itself. So I'm going to talk about Wendell's lab. The lab is located underneath the shed. And when you find it, you're going to go against a boss called the Mant. The Mant is, in my opinion, it's pretty easy. As long as you know how to... I keep repeating myself. As long as you know how to perfect block. <laughs> you can do it at the end of tier 2. As long as you already beat the Black Ant Lab and gotten like the Mighty Globs and the Sturdy Plating. I would at least recommend that. But if you happen to save it for last and, you have, and you're in tier 3, then you should be able to take it on no problem. The Mant is weak against Fresh and Stabbing. If you happen to get the Rusty Spear, which is a tier 3 spear, and you upgrade it to Fresh, you should be able to take it on a lot more. However, there is this weapon that is absolutely clutch it is called the mint mace you have to purchase the mint mace and the way that you do it is you have to get the burgle chip from the maze on top of the picnic table there's a chest in there i'm not going to tell you where to find the key for it because again it's part of the exploration i think it's exciting but yes the mint mace is going to be i mean it carried me for quite a while like i still use it to this day going against much tougher creatures so i use the mint mace going against the man plug the haze don't plug the haze this is the question you're gonna want to ask yourself if you so choose to plug the haze now the reason why people contemplate on plugging the haze is because when you do you're gonna come across this creature over here called the infected wolf spider the infected wolf spider is is it's a beast it's tough now not just because of its health but because of its abilities i definitely recommend having at least tier three gear before taking this on 
The infected wolf spider has the same amount of attack patterns as the regular wolf spider, but there's a twist. It explodes randomly throughout it, its attacks. Now over here, you're gonna see this big old castle. If you're wondering, you can go inside it. Yes, you can. Um, I'm not gonna tell you why this castle is important because it regards to the story itself, but I definitely recommend either having upgraded tier two armor or tier three armor. It's really your choice depending how comfortable you feel as you further progress in the game. Mixers. There are four simple mixers. I believe it's four, maybe five. I think I'm missing one. These mixers are going to be the easiest ones that you come across. The reason why they're so important is because you want to get the raw science that's within the mixers. Another tidbit is there is a room within the Black Ant Lab that you have to successfully defend all the mixers in order to unlock that room. The super mixers are going to be located in the upper yard. They are going to be your most difficult mixer. I will go ahead and tell you the mixer towards the back end on the right side along the brick wall and the fence post is the most difficult mixer. I recommend doing that last and building quite a bit of defenses. I find that doing the mixers were a lot easier when you build like mushroom brick walls to defend itself. But in wall mode, understand that structures will lose integrity a lot faster compared to medium and mild. So sometimes people don't even bother building defenses because it takes too much time for them to just break down really fast. Defending mixers will come in waves. The last wave will always be the hardest. The final defense. Now, in order to complete the game, you have to defend the Java-matic. It is the large coffee pot that's located towards the brawny bin at the back end of the upper yard. The Java-matic defense is going to be very similar to defending the mixers, except instead of one thing, you have to defend three things. I forget what they're called. Anyways, if you haven't built defenses up to this point, I highly recommend that you definitely do. Like the mixers, you will come across multiple waves of creatures. But here's what makes it really difficult. You're gonna come across these creatures called orc bugs. You can identify these bugs with little receivers on top of their head. They're gonna be the same creatures, however, they're gonna have a lot more health. I think the black ox beetle actually has like the same amount of health as like the brood mother. I don't know, I could be wrong. But it has a lot of health. Once you get to the end and you successfully defended all of the mixers, it will go ahead and create the embiggening cell, which will end the game. However, you don't have to end the game there. You can put off the Javamatic defense until you defeat all the bosses. You want to be able to defeat all the bosses in order to get a much higher grade level of completion. Now, I'm not going to cover the bosses in this video because we're already 40 minutes in and I feel like the bosses deserve a whole nother video dedicated just to fight them. So if you guys are interested in something like that, leave a comment down below, let me know, and I'll go ahead and make that. Anyways, we're gonna call it here. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a like. Comment down below a nice little tip that you would give to somebody who's just starting out. Or let me know about your experience playing Grounded. Maybe I'll learn something new. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. We are almost at 500 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. If you want to see more videos like this where I come out with little tips and tricks videos, subscribe so you don't miss them. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!